Hello guys, welcome to the video lecture on introduction to accounting. So our topic in today's video is about the application of golden rules of accounts. Now we already have discussed in our previous video about the golden rules of accounts, where the types of accounts are classified into three broad heads, personal account, real account and nominal account. Now personal account refers to all those account which are related to a particular individual or company group of companies or a corporation. So any name of an individual or a company will be a part of personal account. What were real account? Real account where any kind of assets will be termed under real account and expenses, losses, income, gains will be a part of nominal account. The golden rules of personal account states debit the receiver, credit the giver. That means the receiver required to be debited, giver required to be credited. Say for example, if I am receiving a certain amount of money from a particular person, so that particular person is a giver. On the other side, if I am paying a particular amount to a certain person, then that particular person is a receiver. So this is the way by which we apply the golden rules of accounts. In case of a real account where we said that if we purchase an asset, if the asset is coming into my business, so if it is coming in, it has to be debited. On the other side, if I am selling a particular furniture out, so furniture moving out from my business, so it is going out, that means it has to be credited. With reference to nominal account, any kind of expenses and losses incurred or faced by the organization will be debited, whereas any kind of income or gains earned from the point of view of business will be credited. Today, we are going to discuss with reference to certain examples, the application of golden rules of accounts. Now example 1, so we are doing in the books of SK Edu Info and Company. Example 1, receive rupees 3000 in cash from Ashok. Now there are 4 steps by which we do. The application of golden rules will be based on these 4 steps. Step 1 is identifying the account. Step 2 is identifying the types of account. Step 3 is applying the rules. And step 4 is your decision whether it will be debit or credit. So our first example states, receive rupees 3000 in cash from a show. So SK Edu Info company has received rupees 3000 in cash from a show. So the first part of identification of the account, so we identify two account here. So one we say cash account and the second one is a show account. Now cash account is basically a real account. Why? Because cash is an asset. On the other side, a show is a personal account because it represents the name of an individual. Now from the point of your real account, if you remember the rules of real account, it states what comes in is debited and what goes out is credited. So you have received cash rupees 3000 from Ashok. So that means cash is coming into your business. If cash is coming in as per the golden rules, it has to be debited. On the other side, Ashok is a personal account. Now the rules of personal account is debit the receiver, credit the giver. Now here Ashok is a giver because receive rupees 3000 in cash from Ashok. So Ashok is a giver. That is the reason why the comp my company is receiving. If Ashok is a giver, then Ashok has to be credited. So here the cash account is debited and Ashok account is credited. Let's move on to the next example. The second example states paid electricity bill of rupees 5000. So we have paid from the point of view of the company, we have paid an electricity bill of rupees 5000. So there are two accounts which we identified. One is electricity bill account and the second nothing has been mentioned. So we consider it to be cash account. We expect that we have paid that electricity bill via cash. Electricity as a part of a nominal account because it's an expense. And if you remember the rule of the nominal account, it states that all expenses and losses has to be debited and income and gains has to be credited. So since we are paying electricity bill, it's an expense, so it has to be debited. On the other side, cash is a real account and the rule of real account states that what comes in is debited and what goes out is credited. Now since you are paying the electricity bill, cash is going out from your pocket. So cash has to be credited. So electricity is debited and cash is credited. Let's move on to the example 3. It says purchase furniture for rupees 35,000 in cash. So the company SK Edu Info company has purchased furniture for rupees 35,000 in cash. So we identify two account heads. One is furniture account and the second one is cash account. Now furniture is again a part of real account and cash is also a real account because both are assets. Now since you have purchased furniture, if you remember the rule of real account, what comes in is debited, what goes out is credited. So if you are purchasing furniture, furniture coming into your business, if it comes in, it has to be debited. On the other side, if you are purchasing furniture, you require to pay the amount in cash. 
So cash going out from your pocket, if you remember the real account rules, comes in is debited, going out is credited. So cash account is credited. So furniture is debited and cash is credited. Let's move on to example number four. Example four states, paid to sham rupees 3500. So we identify again two accounts. One is sham account, another is cash account. Sham, name of an individual, personal account. Cash is a part of real account. Now, paid to sham. So my company has paid to sham. So sham is a receiver. Personal account rule, debit the receiver. So we have debited. On the other side, from the point of view of cash, since we have paid to sham, cash is a real account because it's an asset. And since we have paid to sham, cash in the business has gone down or is going out, it's credited. So sham account is debited and cash account is credited. Let's move on to the next example. Receive rent from tenant rupees 5,500 in cash. Now there are two accounts again. One is rent account. Another is we got cash account. Now cash account is a real account because it's an asset. Rent account is a nominal account because it can either be expense loss, income or gain. Now receive rent from tenant rupees 5,500 in cash. So you have received rent. The company has received rent. So the cash balance in the company is already increasing because cash is coming into the business. So cash account has to be debited. On the other side, rent account is a nominal account. And in nominal account, you know, there are four important components, expense, loss, income and gain. If you are receiving rent, it's an income. And as per the rule, expenses, losses has to be debited. Income and gains has to be credited. So rent account has to be credited. So cash account has to be debited and rent account required to be credited. Let's move on to the next example. Sold machinery worth rupees 45,000 and received it via a check. Now if it is via a check, we use a term which is known as bank account. So for cash, we write cash account. If, if your transaction happening via check, we are using a term bank account. So sold machinery, so one is machinery account. And the second point is bank account. Now, bank account can either be a personal account or a real account. So if it is used by an individual, it's basically a personal account. But from the point of view of a company, that particular account can be termed as a, a, a asset in terms of a real account. So we will consider here different books has given different interpretation. Various books has given bank account to be a personal account. Very many books also have represented bank account to be a real account being a part of an asset. We will consider it to be a part of an asset. So bank account, so bank is an asset, a current asset. So we consider it to be a real account. Machinery is an asset. We again consider it to be a real account. Now you have sold machinery worth rupees 45,000 and you have received via check. So if you have received check, that means your bank balance is going high because you have already got the money. So money has come in. So that is the reason we term it as debit. Because your bank balance is going high because you have received the check. On the other side, you have sold machinery. That means machinery going out from your business. So machinery account is, is credited. So finally, bank account is debited and machinery account is credited. Let's move on to the next example. Deposited cash of rupees 10,000 into bank account. So one we got is bank account and there is cash account. Now I said bank account is a part of real account. Cash account is also a real account because both are assets. Now deposited cash of rupees 10,000 into bank. So your bank balance has gone high because money has come in. So bank account has to be debited. On the other side, since you have put in cash in your bank, your current cash position in your pocket or in your organization has gone down or else has gone out. And that is the reason why cash account is credited. So bank account is debited. Cash account is credited. Let's move on to the last example. Withdrawn from bank rupees 30,000. Now what you have withdrawn? Basically from bank you are only going to withdraw cash. So we have two accounts. One is bank account, another is cash account. Now if you have withdrawn cash from bank, then your current cash position is going to go high. So cash and bank both are part of real account. Since you have withdrawn cash from bank, your current cash balance in your hand will go high. That means it has come in, which means it's debited. On the other side, if you have withdrawn cash from bank, your bank balance has gone down, 
or else going out, it has to be credited. I hope you have understood the basic concepts relating to application of the golden rules of account. In our next video, we will discuss how we pass on entries. Till then, thank you. Have a nice day.